Hello, I'm Derek Pannell. I'm the director of Strawberry Hill House and Garden, and uh, this is the home that Horace Walpole created in the 18th century. An extraordinary, absolute flight of fancy and imagination and creativity, which is the hallmark of everything that you'll find in Strawberry Hill. So here we are in the gallery, which is probably the most splendid and extraordinary room in the house, and happily now home to our newly acquired portrait of Catherine de' Medici and her children, uh, a splendid and remarkable painting, which was in Walpole's original collection and which has just found its way back to us at the beginning of the year. Perhaps we could move on to the round room where I can show you a little bit more of the extraordinary home that Walpole created. So here we are in the round room, a magnificent room and a splendid gilded ceiling with this beautiful classical frieze which is echoed in this beautiful Adam fireplace, above which of course is the portrait of the man himself, Horace Walpole. So here we are in another lovely room which is called the Tribune. Again, another remarkable ceiling, but this would have been where Walpole would have displayed various curiosities from sculptures to porcelain to portraits. Again, just an eclectic mix of his extraordinary aesthetic taste. Now I'd like to show you to the library. On our way to the library we passed the armory and this is the location which inspired Walpole's famous first Gothic novel, The Castle of Otranto. And this was the first Gothic novel that was ever written and has inspired the whole genre that followed. So let's go to the library. And here we are in the library for many visitors with three and a half thousand books, probably the most interesting and remarkable room. Walpole was a great reader, academic student of art, geography, politics, drama, theatre, all sorts of subjects are covered in this remarkable collection of books. And here we are in the blue bedroom. This is a reproduction of the bed that Walpole would have had. And here we have a portrait of Walpole's mother and father. And then just on the left hand side you can see Houghton Hall in Norfolk which was the family home. So let's have a look at another bedroom. So this is a particularly interesting room in as much as it shows you some of the original house which Walpole adapted when he moved here in 1747. And through this room you can trace the history of the house through the Victorian period and the various owners that followed. For example, here's a picture of Lady Waldegrave, who was one of the owners of Strawberry Hill. And this is one of her soirees where she's entertaining her friends in Strawberry Hill House. Allegedly, Walpole did much of his letter writing and his novels and so on in a small room just off this bedroom. So this is thought to be the room where Walpole, perhaps sitting at a desk like this, would have written his letters, novels and many other works. And from that window, in those days, you would have been able to look across his land down to the river, which of course was one of the reasons why Walpole moved to Twickenham in the first place. Now let me show you the main entrance to the building. So this is the hallway, and this is the entrance where Walpole would have welcomed his visitors. Deliberately, Walpole created quite a dark space and he commandeered this word gloomth, which was a, a mixture of warmth and gloom. And the idea was that you would come into what was thought to be a fairly dark space, but then as you go into the house, you'll find these very light and splendid rooms, which seem even more so having come from a rather dark hall. This has been a brief snapshot of just some of the rooms that we have here. We have many more rooms to see and of course the splendid grounds and the gardens to see as well. We look forward to welcoming you to Strawberry Hill. To find out more do visit our website and you can see all that we have to offer.